this week, we have a very special interview with Mel Shaw from M Bombay Tobac. That's right, from Bombay Tobac, I should say. We smoke uh, just, it's an awesome cigar. I don't want to spoil the segment for you, uh, but we smoke a one of his newer releases, uh, myself, Will, uh, and Mel, and we talk about it in our interview segment for this evening. Um, our debonair ideal, <clears throat> planning a cigar road trip where hopefully you have gas and cigars. Our stogies of the week is going to be fun. Lots of new releases to smoke from Roma Craft, Caldwell, Leaf by Oscar. I throw in an Opus X review just for good measure. Uh, some releases from Tatuaje, EP, Carrillo, La Jugada, and PDR, all that and more. So stay tuned. Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesterday. By Rocky Patel Premium Cigars, the sun-grown Maduro is hand-rolled at Rocky Patel's boutique factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. This triple-capped, hand-bunched, and hand-rolled cigar is accompanied by a gorgeous broadleaf wrapper. Well-balanced, rich, and decadent, it truly is a great addition to any humidor and worthy of bearing the long-respected sun-grown name. For more information, visit them on the web at RockyPatel.com and be sure to follow Rocky Patel Premium Cigars on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm, of course, your host, Paul Asadorian, broadcasting live from the Villiger North American Studios here in Rhode Island. On the lines via Skype tonight, we've got none other than Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Oh, Will's muted. Hey, Paul. Hey, there he is. Yep. What's going on, Will? Hey, what's going on here? Oh, yes. you know, yes. it's football season. That's always fun for us cigar smokers that like to, uh, you know, watching a football game and having a cigar is a really uh, a tried and true uh, kind of activity that we like to partake in, as, as do many of our listeners and viewers. So, uh, hooray for football season. We're, we're both undefeated. Hooray for, for quarterbacks that we may or may not have. <laughs> Wow, hey, Johnny, Johnny Manziel is out there, though. <laughs> it's just I I couldn't have predicted uh, how the season would start uh, for a lot of teams, right? And you know, me being a Patriots fan, it's just uh, it's a little stressful, but you know, it's good keeps us on our toes, you know. I tell you, he Garoppolo till he got hurt looked really good, and he did. I was I'm I was curious to see what he would look like in those first four games, like just Jimmy. Uh. And what he would do in four games. Because, I mean, like a game in a almost half, it, you know, yes, he did good. He did really well, I should say. But uh, uh, it's just kind of a shame. But, you know, next man up. We press yeah. on. Just yeah. like with our live streaming server. Next server up. We're streaming to you live from our backup server tonight. <laughs> or, or gas stations down in North Carolina. <laughs> or gas, that's right. You got to have contingency plans. Oh, gas. <laughs> um, what are you smoking, Will? Um, I'm smoking a cigar. Actually, I gave I threw the Oasis rating on this cigar earlier this year. I'm not sure. This may have been when the baby came. It's the Crux Connoisseur. Um, you said you've been liking those. This cigar <coughs> is just getting better and better. Um, it is. I think. It, I, I mean, it. It is just a great, great everyday smoke. Um, and to throw an Oasis rating on a regular production everyday smoke is. It just seems like it's less than it's common these days. But this cigar is that good. Mm, that's yeah, awesome. Th this cigar is incredible. Yeah, I lit up uh, an EP Carrillo. <clears throat> this is the Cardinal Fifty Two, the Robusto size. The old Cardinals. The old Cardinals. They're going away. Yeah, and I I, there's a rumor that some shops may be placing these on closeout. And I have to say, when I first lit it up, I was like, "Yeah, I'm already pretty well stocked up. I got like at least a box plus." 
uh, whatever is rummaging around in my humidor or, or laying around in my humidor at home. But I it, I got like uh, past the first third will, and <clears throat> excuse me, this cigar kicked into high gear. I mean, the sweetness is just amazing on this cigar. I shouldn't say that. This cigar is completely terrible. You should not buy any on closeout. You should let Big Pete and I buy them all on closeout. I'm curious to see if Bill Big Pete is his experience. He's smoking one of these too. Um, off the charts. Off the, and it didn't start out that way. It kind of started out like, yeah, it took a little while to kind of get going. And wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, these are going away. So, I mean, there's going to be, they're being replaced by the Cardinal Impacts, which are the box press ones, which are supposedly a different blends. So, and I, I really think that those Cardinals were, they just, they were great cigars and they just never, never took off. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know why either. I, I never I saw a bad review on those cigars either. I can't put my finger on why. I wish I could, but I can't. Um, so we're going to start with our, <coughs> excuse me, Stogies of the Week. Is that true? That is true. We're Very excited. reverse tonight, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I like Stogies of the Week. Um, we where do you want to, you want to kick it off, Will? Go ahead. Yeah. Kick, kick it off. Um. This is a cigar I'm going to kick off. It um, It's getting some attention, at least down in where, my neck of the woods. It's a cigar called La Gran Llave, and that's double L-A-V-A-E. Uh, La Gran Llave means the big key. Um, this cigar w- was done by um, one of the persons who was involved with the cigar, a guy by the name of Michael Argenti. Have you ever yeah. heard of Burger and Argenti cigars? Yes, yes. He, he was the Argenti. Gotcha. Um he worked with A.J. Fernandez on this particular blend. However, I don't know what happened between the time he launched and the trade show, but he's left this company. Whatever it is, he had another partner. He's out of the picture right now, and, and mm-hmm. I guess his partner is running it. But he was the guy who worked on the blend with A.J., and um, now A.J. Fernandez is distributing this cigar. So it's, you know, the A.J. Fernandez accounts, this is showing up on a lot of A.J. Fernandez accounts down here. Um, it's a box pressed uh, San Andreas Maduro over Ecuadorian Habano and Nicaraguan Habano. I smoked for this uh, week. I smoked a five by fifty four robusto, um, and uh, it's got some interesting band. It's a very you'll see it in the feed once the pe- feed publishes. Mm. Very modern looking band on this thing. Um, I like the cigar a lot. Um, I thought it was a classic San Andreas cigar. Without the harshness, um, I thought it, so. It's not something necessarily that's going to redefine your San Andreas experience by any means, but I think if you like San Andreas, but I found it was also one of these uh, wrappers that didn't overpower the cigar with that pungent spice. Um, got a nice co- coffee, earthy notes, a uh, little bit of dark chocolate in there. Um, there's some pepper towards the end of that cigar, so there's definitely a little spicy kick towards the end. Um, Somewhere, I'm kind of going back and forth between a box split and a box worthy on this because I really like it. I'm going to say I'm going to be a little conservative and go box split right now with this. I think but, you sent uh, me one of these, Will. Yeah, I, I actually got these before the show. Okay. So, yeah, these are pre-pred- uh, pre-August pre 8th blades. So, yeah, you ha- you've gotten these before the show. I, I, had, I, I did review one um, as well. And I, this is another one. Is, I think you got to find your size with this cigar. I actually like the Robusto. A lot of people I talk to like the Corona. So <clears throat> I uh, I'm I'm going to smoke it's on my list. There's a lot of cigars to review right list. now. Yeah. Um but I smoked a Aroma Craft Tobacco Intemperance BA 20 let me see if my Roman numerals right. BA 21 AWS 4. Did I get that right? Yeah. That's, that's correct. That's a, an interesting name. It, AWS is not Amazon Web Services or Amazon whatever. That's a different AWS. No, it, it definitely is a different AWS. Okay. Um, <laughs> from, <laughs> yeah. Is it Web Services? Did I get the, All right. Tell me what it means in this context. It It is definitely – it has to do with, um, I think, a guy named A.D. Fillmore. Mm-hmm. Um, who was one of the guys involved with the whole temperance movement? Um, so I think he was an, actually, I think he was basically, it's some, he was somehow, this guy Fillmore was somehow tied in with this. Gotcha. 
Yeah, that's all I remember. So, so it's uh, not Amazon Web Services. It's not Amazon. <laughs> Web. No, no, it's not Amazon. Web. Yeah, and I think it's like Arch. I think it's, I think the name is like Archibald. I don't know what the WS came from, but apparently it came from this guy a a uh, a D Fillmore. Uh, so it's a Lonsdale, in a very yes, limited, <laughs> limited intemperance. Yeah, it's um, it definitely is. I'd say one that um, it's not a. I don't. It's one that you tend to to see. I, it used to be limited to certain shops, but now I think they're starting to show up at other shops right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought it was a great smoke. I mean, it, it's the the balance for me on this cigar was spot on. I mean, and Skip, I mean, we've talked about Skip. We've interviewed Skip multiple times. It, it, this one just has just the right amount of spice with bold flavor, coupled with some, like, nuances, a little bit of chocolate. Like, it's just, it's got a lot going on, but it's a very well-balanced experience, right? Like, nothing, nothing is, like, it, it's, like, a good... Like there's peaks and valleys, but like the the average is is awesome. It's awesome. Like just the way everything balances out for me in the cigar was good. Uh, that's what I uh, remembered of it was great smoking experience. But if you pay attention, you're like, I can get some spice, I can get some chocolate, like I had some nice bold flavors, but it wasn't too bold. Good cigar. I rated a box split. I thought this was a really strong offering uh, from Romacraft and Skip Martin. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I think it's one of my favorite sizes in the BA. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I would say that Lonsdale does the blend very, very uh, well with that. You know, the revenge that they did for Mr. J's on a smoke shop, also very good. I thought, not that that cigar wasn't balanced, but it was more in like a stronger, little pepperier, uh, chocolatey profile. Whereas yeah. this one brings in a lot of more uh, nuanced flavors. Um and, and not that I like either one better than the other, but it's just a different smoking experience that I, that I appreciate in both of them, to be honest with you. What what really surprised me about that Lonsdale, um, the Ara Paraca wrapper to me is one of those wrappers I think that can overpower a blend. The Brazilian Ara Paraca, mm-hmm. it doesn't do it with that blend. Um, it, it just seems like it, it's actually smoother. Like most of that Ara Paraca wrapper has a little bit of a muskiness, a little bit of a, yeah. of a sharpness to it. I don't get that with 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 the uh, the Intemperance BA line. I would think on the smaller ring gauge, I would get some of it, but I didn't. So I, w- I was actually very, very pleased with that cigar. <laughs> Back to you, Will. Um, smoke this cigar. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a exclusive cigar to a online store called Best Cigar Prices, mm-hmm. um, and it's um, actually by uh, PDR Cigars. It's called the PDR Nicaraguan Reserve, and. The story with this cigar is, I, I would say it's kind of along the lines, it's one of these cigars, it's made in the Dominican Republic, but it's using all Nicaraguan tobacco. So, mm. which you don't, I don't think Abe Flores has a Nicaraguan Puro, but he, he's done one for this cigar. Um, it has a Corojo 99 wrapper, one size, a 6x52 Toro. Um, this cigar is a beast. It, it's a powerhouse. I mean, it was, it's probably the strongest cigar I've had out of PDR. Um, it really, it's going to hit you, uh, with full body flavors. It, uh, it's going to hit you. It's going to go to medium. It's going to start medium to full on nicotine level strains, but it's going to kick up to that full level. Um, it's, it's the quintessential bold Nicaraguan smoke. Um, it's going to basically give you a lot of those bold Nicaraguan flavors you'd expect, including some of the spice. Uh, there's definitely some spice in the last, uh, in the last third, um, it was a little bit of a high maintenance cigar to to kind of burn straight. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming there was a lot of lajero in that blend. Um, so it was it wasn't that it burned terrible. It did rec- you know when I touched it up it was fine, but it seemed like I was constantly having to touch the cigar up. But it was more of a nuisance because the flavors delivered were good. Um, it's a six dollar price point, so there's great value with this cigar um, for what you even even with some of the touch ups. Um, I gave it I actually. With the price point in mind, I gave this a box split because I think for a six dollar cigar, I was really, really pleased with it. Um, you know, like I said, it's a good value smoke. And if you look, if you're looking for something bold and strong, and you uh, something dip, this is one to try. <laughs> it sounds like there's some good aging potential there too. That that was kind of like my feeling too. I have I have to actually get some more of these to see. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I think the aging. I'm curious to see if it will hold its strength with the age. <clears throat> 
Uh, I smoked uh, Ivy Cigars Porcelain Double Corona. It's a seven and a half by 50. It's a big cigar. And this is from Jason Hawley at Viva Republica, which someone told me it was from Ashton. Is it? Is that, um, wrong? Is that just wrong? It's completely wrong. Okay. Uh, I um, so. So the deal with Ivy is um, it, it's another brand he formed. Um, so it's kind of like what Phil has debonair and yeah, then he gotcha. has Indian Motors. Like, yeah. it, it, it's the same thing. He, he's marketing it under a different brand. He's doing those at um, La Aurora. <laughs> Uh, so, it has a Ecuador and Habano wrapper, a Cameroon and Dominican double binder, uh, and Dominican Nicaraguan fillers. Yeah, and I tell you what, I this it's a again, it's a big cigar. You don't see a lot of double Coronas on the market. We've we've remarked about that recently, uh, but here comes a double Corona. It didn't smoke to awesome, Will. Like the smoking experience was great, and the flavors were really really good. I, I'd have to smoke more to really like get into in depth. What I experienced with flavors, I, I just have to say it's a very refined, very well balanced uh, cigar. It's got a little bit of strength to it. It's not over the top on strength, but it's not mild either. Uh, so it, I guess that puts it at medium full, and uh, it's got a high price point of fourteen fifty, um, or around that that price. Uh, you know, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen dollars. Um, but it, <clears throat> it it commands that price tag, in, in my opinion. I don't know if you really? smoked it, this blend well. I thought it did. I called it a box split. This is a big cigar that I would smoke all the time. Um, I, I have the cigar. I have I have one of the cigars. I, I don't have the double Corona. I have uh, the uh, the Dudley, <laughs> which I guess they use an Ivy League name yet, which is a five by fifty. But I haven't smoked it. Um, this I think was intended to be a more premium line offering that he yeah. was doing. Completely different from the whole Viva marketing angle, which I think is pretty cool to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I mean, don't don't pass these by in, in, in your retailer when you see them. Definitely pick some up. Um, again, I smoked the double Corona size. I don't know how the other sizes smoke. Um, but, you know, trying the large size and it smoking as well as it did, I got to imagine the other sizes are going to be are going to be really good, too. Although, who knows? Maybe this is a blend that smokes good in the big set. You know, we've had that debate. Um, <clears throat> but double Corona is a tough size to nail. And uh, I thought they nailed it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know if Viva has done a, like, under his umbrella, I don't know if he's done a double Corona. Um, I've smoked a lot. I like his stuff a lot. I just don't know if um, he smoked a double Corona or not. Back to you, Will. Yeah, so um, I smoked Moya Ruiz's uh, La Jugada Claro, um, which is their Connecticut Shade offering that they released uh, just before the trade show. I smoked the number one, which is a six and a half by 48. Interesting thing. I'm seeing a lot of six and a half by 48 cigars in the last few months. It seemed like that was the size everyone was targeting this year. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were tired of doing Toros and Robustos, and maybe it was something a little shorter than a Churchill, but I'm seeing a, a lot of those six and a half by 48s. So I was intrigued enough to smoke that one. Um, it's a Eric Espinosa made cigar, uh, Connecticut shade wrap, Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper over Nicaraguan binder and filler. Um, I guess with this cigar, I was ex- you know everything from Moya Ruiz is very is they tend to have medium plus the full stuff. That that's pretty mm-hmm. much been I'd say to Emma. This one definitely is a, a gateway cigar for them, as a, the blender Hector Alfonso he would say. It's kind of one of those entry points, I think, in the Moya Ruiz. I think they needed a cigar um, on the milder side. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is going to be much more of a milder type of cigar, um, at least to start out with. It will increase in strength and body along the way. So it's it's not going to stay mild for the whole thing, but it's not going to be in that medium. It's not going to get past medium in terms of that strength thing. Um, flavors, I thought, were really spot on with the flavors. Uh, it has some good – has the cream notes you'd expect, some cedar notes. Um in there, a little bit of uh, citrus sweetness to it. Um, no harshness to the cigar, which is what I really liked. So I felt it smoked really good. Does carry a higher price point of ten forty nine, which uh, you know that that I think it's a little high for. I'm not saying the cigar is not worth it, but there's a lot out there on the market, as you know. Uh, but I gave it a box split. I thought it was a pretty good cigar. Awesome. <clears throat> um, what else have I been smoking? Um, I smoked this one from Caldwell, the Anastasia Mercure. Yep. 
What what is this all about? There's a lady's face on the band. Uh, I'll say this: isn't she one of the most uh, pretty women I've ever seen on a cigar? She's very striking, and she looks pissed off. So yeah. well, I would well, I would venture to guess that she's married. It's just um, probably she's dead. she died. She died. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. That's like you when they tell me <laughs> when they took this picture, she was probably pissed off. At the show. That has the like I'm pissed off at my husband look. Like, yeah. right? I know that look really well, actually. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, the story with the cigar, it, it says was the one who came up with the idea that she was like the best looking woman on a cigar band, but, um, she's actually the Grand Duchess Anastasia, the, uh, daughter of, uh, Tsar Nicholas II. So when, uh, she was executed along with him. And as you know, Caldwell has that cigar, the last Tsar. So this is kind of an offshoot of this cigar. Um, the interest, w- w- here's what, in, now tobacco wise, he is not talking on the blend at all. So um, he's gotten very quiet with his blends lately since <clears throat> FDA's come out, I've noticed. Um, but I've noticed, yeah, so he's gotten quiet. So we don't know about the blend, but we do know who made the cigar, and it's uh, Ernesto Carrillo. Interesting. Yeah, Ernesto Perez Carrillo made the cigar. Uh, the Mercur is, was that the 7x47 you smoked? Yeah, it was like a Corona. It was smaller oh, okay. than that. Okay, so you smoked, and it's actually not the Mercur. You smoked the Caspia, the 5 and 3 quarter by 43. Yeah, it was more like a, a somewhere between a Corona and Petit Corona, so that size you know makes sense. Um, so, more so more like Corona, right? Yeah, um, so that's Caspia. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell with the picture, but yeah, the Mercure is a Churchill. But yeah, so you smoked the Caspia. I smoked two of these for this review, and I really wanted to like this cigar. Um, I like I don't know. I just I I didn't really pay attention too much to the band. I was just trying to smoke the cigar for the cigar, and not you know have any preconceived notions or. Uh, think about like who made it or where it came from too much, which is kind of my strategy for reviewing. And <clears throat> I've liked a lot of releases from Caldwell. Um, and this was one that just, it didn't do it for me. I, I It was kind of unbalanced. Um, I, I did, gave it a fair shot. I smoked two of them and it, it still pulled a try one with me. Like a blend never really came together for me, uh, which is interesting because you said some people rated this really high and others not so much. So maybe it's one of those polarizing things. And maybe it's a size thing too. I only tried that one, uh, you know, that kind of Corona size. So it didn't do it for me, Will. No, uh, in fact, when you when you said it was the Corona, most of the folks I know have smoked the other sizes. That was probably the one I haven't heard anyone talk about. But it's been very polarizing the reaction in terms of I've heard people love this cigar, um, and I've heard people say, you know, nah, you know, so. It, it, it's one of those that, that I mean, he was he was prior to IPCPR giving a lot of these out to retailers and it was getting very, very, very favorable impressions on it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, ha- I have the cigar. Stogie Santa sent me a care package with the cigar, but I believe he sent me the Toros or the five by there's also a five by forty nine is like a short, uh, short which show. is probably a size that he that he likes. Uh, which might speak to my rating about that particular size. Yeah, yeah he did not send me the Corona the, or yeah. the Caspia in this place. So, yeah, um, and that's, like I said, I, um, I don't remember what he said about this cigar other than if he sent it to me, he thinks there's some potential with it. Cause yes. Because when, when he doesn't like a cigar, he won't send it to me. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. No matter how much I ask. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. That's, yeah, so, um, that's how he rolls. Yeah, but like I said, this uh, it was a hot cigar at the show too. So it's I'm curious. I got to smoke it now. I haven't smoked it. Curious, to see what you think. What else you got, Will? Um, we're on the EPC. Yeah, Carrillo Inch Colorado number sixty-two. Yeah, so this is a a new inch cigar that came out. Um, they're actually you know they have the inch natural and the inch Maduro. They actually had a third one that called the C ninety nine which used a Corojo wrapper, it, it never got some traction, and I think they discontinued it. Um, but they replaced it with a, a Colorado wrapper offering on this thing. So um, that was unveiled at the show. Um, and I smoked, and it's in the same sizes that the inch is known to smoke. So, um, you know, it, it, there's no difference in terms of the sizes um, with with the um, inch, right? So I smoked the number 62, which is that 5 by 62. So it's the shortest one that's in the set. Um, 
It has, um, like I said, it has a the the, the wrapper looks Colorado like. It's it's got almost that cinnamon color to it, um, which is really good. It, it was kind of a bumpy wrapper for a big cigar too. You know, like sometimes you get that bumpiness and a little bit of that toothiness on the Lancero, but with um with this particular one, it, it was it, it had a very bumpy look, but it, it kind of gave it a little charm. Uh, the wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano, binder is Nicaraguan, uh, filler is Nicaraguan and Dominican. Um, I think the store sorted off pretty good. It had a nice sweetness, uh, that sweet cedar, a little bit of that baker spice. There's a creamy texture with the cigar as well. Um, it, it diminishes along the way. It's going to become much more of a woody cigar, I'd say, in the second half. Um, still a little bit of sweetness. There's still a little bit of black pepper on that cigar. A um, couple of notes on the cigar. Um, it's not a strong cigar. It's a, I'd say it's medium in strength, like medium plus in body, so it's, it's not going to overpower you. Um, it was a little bit of a difficult cigar to burn clean. Um, and, in fact, on one of the ones I smoked, it had some combustion issues. Hmm. Um, but I'm going to kind of put that uh, on the side because that sometimes kind of ha- – it wasn't a consistent problem. Um, but it wasn't the most – again, it was one of those high-maintenance burn cigars, and I've had, I've had inches that have performed much better than, than these. Um, I still liked it. I think it's going to, I think there's a place for this cigar in the inch portfolio. It's probably, it's, it's a little milder than the natural and the Maduro, but still there. I give it a, a fiver on that one. I think, um, EPC for me is one of the, uh, very interesting cigar manufacturer. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, Ernie cigars and the cigars coming out of the, uh, you know, his company, his factories. And there's just, there's a lot to say, um, the inch for me is not one of my favorites, uh, although I have admittedly I haven't smoked a whole ton of them. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I, you know, I've got another earning cigar here to to smoke, and uh, there's just there's a lot going on there. And, and you know, one of my concerns is that like people don't get it right with a lot of his cigars, and I see retailers closing stuff out because they're not selling it. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, these are amazing cigars, and we review all these cigars, and I, I have to say, like. Out of if I had to pick like a half a dozen manufacturers, will that like I smoke regularly from their offerings, EPC is pretty high up on that list, dude. And we've had this conversation. Yeah, uh, I I don't understand why. <clears throat> you know, the some of the blend changes probably to increase interest. Like, why aren't people just enamored with some of these blends like we are? I I feel like people are missing the boat on the EPC stuff. That's yeah, just my I'm. I kind of agree, and I think that was a lot of the impetus to do the, the overhaul of the portfolio. Yeah. Unfortunately, some good stuff did fall by the wayside, like I talked about with um, the, the old Cardinals or ones. That and really this old Cardinals is great. This thing is smoking a, fantastic a, right now. I would say, and I, and I know I'll take your love for the Connecticut Reserva out because mm-hmm. that came along a little later. I still think that's one of the best regular production lines he's come out with. We're both the Sumatra and the Maduro in that Cardinal. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, so, and, and, you know, I heard, I'm not trying to put words in Stogie Santa's mouth, but I, I know he, he loved those cigars. He did. I know he wasn't as in love with the new box presses. So, Interesting. Um, but, but I haven't smoked them. But what I will say is, I think at the, at the trade show, they were, they were, I mean, they did a massive overhaul of the portfolio. It was probably, they were one, they, they probably did the biggest overhaul of any company of a portfolio. They were taking a lot of time to talk to their retailers. Mm-hmm. I saw a lot more traffic at the booths this year. Last year was very quiet, and I was concerned with the amount of the, with the traffic low at their booths. Um, this year, it seemed like there, there was a lot more of that, that foot traffic in there. So we'll see what happens with that. I smoked uh, the La Prave. Have you heard of the La Prave, Will? Yes, I have. So this actually comes from the owners of Churchill Smoke Shop and Lounge right here in East Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I, in fact, do know the shop, and I know the owner, Brian, who is, by the way, a super nice guy, and so isn't everyone. Every time I go in the shop, like I feel like I'm, I'm sitting around with like close friends and family. A fantastic uh, shop. And um, so there, <laughs> they did a really, so he, he, yes, he has a good relationship with Black Label Trading Company. He carries a lot of their cigars. That's where I go to get my Black Label Trading Company cigars. And um, <clears throat> this cigar is made in Nicaragua. Fabrica de Oveja Negra. Did I 
Say that that's, right? That, yeah, that's Black Label Trading Company. Yeah, Black Oveja Label. Negra. Yeah, um, Oveja Negra, yep. And so this is, uh, what did I smoke? I smoked the natural of this one, which is a Corojo wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler, uh, Ecuadorian Corojo wrapper. I don't know the, the binder on it. I apologize. Um, but this was a good cigar. This was a hang I think it's a Nicaraguan. Incoming. Yeah, Nicaraguan binder. Yeah. So <clears throat> this was a good cigar. I, I really liked it. Like, as far as like a good everyday smoking cigar, I thought this was fantastic as well as this martini. Thank you very much. Um, I thought this was great. Like, I, it's just a very easy smoking cigar, easy burn, easy draw. Pete's, <laughs> Pete's drooling so much on, on this E.P. Carrillo Cardinal. He just came in with a napkin tucked into his, <laughs> into his shirt. That's how much he's liking this cigar. Um, but I've heard good things about the Laprov. I thought it was good. It was definitely worthy of a fiver for me. Um, it, it didn't like stand out and, and deserve a higher rating in my opinion, but this is a solid offering. I like that. It's kind of like La Prov. It's kind of like Providence. It's tied to, you know, my local town, uh, which is great. Um, but I thought this was good. Uh, there's also, yes, yeah, so there's a Maduro as well. I think he makes, <coughs> but, um, um, yeah, I do, I've actually heard, I've heard some very positive things on this cigar. Um, and they, um, so I definitely have. And, and, um, now, is that a, is a shop exclusive or is it going national? So I bought mine at Mr. Jason Savannah Smoke Shop. So he must be carrying them now. So I yeah I don't <coughs> I don't know if it's like a local thing if they open up to local shop I, I don't know the whole I apologize <clears throat> I don't know the whole story behind the cigar. Okay no I mean it's uh, I knew it was something for Churchill's originally. <clears throat> so maybe they opened it up. In any case, you should try it. I mean, as far as like. Like, this is one I would light up while watching a game. Like, it's just a good everyday smoking cigar. And my, that was the, my takeaway from it. So, interesting. Take from that what you will. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> you got more on your list, Bill? I got one more. Okay. Uh, smoke of the Week uh, comes from the Skinny Monsters series, which um, I'm kind of starting to work my way backwards through them, which is what I typically smoke. So, I smoked Skinny Jekyll, um, which I really liked. You know, it's funny. They came out with Jekyll and Hyde, and they couldn't have they, those names couldn't have been more appropriate because Jekyll was really good, and Hyde was, like, not too good for me, right? Um, that was just my opinion. <laughs> they, were, they were completely opposite cigars. Yeah. Um, and the skinny Hyde and the regular Hyde were, were kind of misses for me. And I, I mentioned there's, like, 52 monster facings now, so there's got to be something you like better than the others. This is one I really liked. I like the original Jekyll blend. I think the uh, skinny Jekyll does it a lot of justice. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it worked really well in that format. Um, it's got that Sancti Spiritus wrapper, which is the Latelier wrapper over Nicaraguan binder and filler. The skinny Jekyll, like all the skinny monsters, are 6 by 38 in there. Um, they're also at the trade show. They're selling the monsters now in 25-count boxes. Um, so you can get them now. But the only thing is the retailer had to buy all the monster blends. They couldn't cherry pick saying, I want more Jekylls and less Hydes. Like, you couldn't do that. Um, but the cigar. Oh, I, wait. The so only, the Jekyll and Hyde you can buy individually now? Only the skinny monster. Okay. Only the skinny monsters. And oh, and, on, and so uh, of all the eight or nine releases, you can buy individual skinny monster boxes? Yeah, it's actually 10 total. Um, and you can buy the individual skinny monsters. Um, the only way, though, that the retailer could carry them is he had to take all 10 blends. So, like, could you buy one box? I don't know. How, yeah. You could buy, yeah, from you from a consumer, you could buy whatever you want. But for the retailer to carry it, he had to carry all 10. <laughs> he couldn't just say, hey, I'm only carrying Franks and Jekylls and nothing else. Interesting. So, but as a consumer, you could go ahead and buy the box of these at 25. And the skinny um, monsters come in a sample box of 10. Right, and I'm well. working, yeah, I bought a couple of the sample boxes of 10. So, uh, given that, I mean... I think that's pretty smart. Um, I think it's interesting that as a re- interesting decision for a retailer, but from a consumer, I now want to smoke through all my skinny monsters, find which one I like, and probably buy a box of my my favorites. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. That, that actually, I was like, my feeling too. And you know, I went when I got to the Jekyll. I really liked this blend. Um, I thought I thought it was a little less complex than the full size Jekyll, but it was still very flavorful. Um, and I was saying, you know what? This one, absolutely, I'd go get a box of these. They, right. they were they were great. It was a great smoke, a lot of flavor with this cigar. Um, like I said, it just I thought it had a little less complexity, which I wasn't surprised given there's a um, 
you know, you get a, there's probably more of that wrapper on there, but that's okay. Um, I, and, and the boxes are really cool looking. The pictures didn't come out great on Cigar Coop because they have it, they had it more in these glass cabinets with the most glare possible. So it, it just makes photo is a nightmare. But uh, they each each of the boxes are um, they're kind of remember the boxes that the the black label Petite Lanceros came in the square boxes kind of yes the it's, yeah it's, it's it's the same style of those but uh, and they're each a different color hmm so yeah I would um I definitely would recommend the Jekyll uh, especially if you you know as far if you like the original Jekyll I think you're gonna like this one as well. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm interested in the, the, the chalk and the tiff because, to be honest with you, the ones that stick out in my mind, I thought those were great blends. But I thought they worked different in different sizes, so I got I to gotta, I gotta go back and do some more smoking. See, I wish, I wish that tiff, they did it. I like the pudgy better. I was just going to say I like the pudgy better. <laughs> yes. Now, the chalk's a solid blend in, in both sizes. Mm -hmm. um, that's one I'd love to see them do a full-size monster of. Mm. You know, just to kind of get that. But I thought the Chuck, I thought the Chuck and the Jack, I've smoked, I've smoked Tiff, Ch uh, Chuck, Jekyll and Hyde. And I say Jekyll's, Jekyll and the Chuck are my two favorites. Right in the, now. in the skinny monsters? In the skinny monsters, yeah. Yeah, I thought that pudgy monster Tiff was just, I, that's one I would buy boxes of. That was really, you know, a lot of people didn't like, you and I were in the minority. We, we did like that cigar. Yeah. That a lot of people Robusta. didn't. Yeah, I, I a lot of people like really didn't like it, and I was like, no, this is this was good. Well, I good. think it, when it first came out, it was kind of off, and then when I smoked the second one, it had some age on it, and it was just amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> speaking of Connecticut's, I smoked a Leaf by Oscar Connecticut Lancero. I had to. It's kind of cool to see the traditional Leaf by Oscar uh, leaves that surround the cigar in the Lancero. Like, that's, I don't know, that was kind of cool for me. Aren't uh, they ugly, though? Aren't they? I mean, they're, not, they're so, ugly. You know what's interesting, Will, is I was actually thinking, uh, I've collected quite a few of these external wrappings from the Leaf by Oscar. It'd be kind of interesting to roll these into, like, one cigar <laughs> and smoke it. <laughs> I don't know how good it would be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the leaf is fermented, that's why, but it'd be interesting. <clears throat> yeah, well, I put the, I've been putting some of the leaves back in the humidor, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, roll one up well it's be interesting because i don't know if that leaf is wrapper leaf or but what kind of leaf it is i don't i don't know if it would pass an aesthetics quality check but um that's for sure i um i i see me being a pyromaniac i take those leaves and i burn them every time i they do, do have I've, a, I've burned they some have a good too. Aroma. they have a good aroma though I, well that's why <laughs> that's yeah. why i burned it was to get the aroma <clears throat> once it was lit so um i don't know maybe we'll do a shorts and we'll Collect a bunch of leaf by Oscar. That would be cool. And and smoke them and see how it oh. turns out. So, and I'm gonna apologize to the Oscar folks. So you know that Oscar cigar with the candela sleeve? Yeah. I lit the candela sleeve on the cigar. Did it smell like grass clippings? It, it, the the smell it, it almost it, it smelled almost like um it smelled almost like Gary Johnson's um tobacco. Gary Johnson's deliberate, yeah, the, the, it smelled a little more like weed. <laughs> 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 right? um, but basically, don't don't try it at home, because what happens is that that candela is gonna leaves gonna burn hot very quickly, and it's gonna start burning the the wrapper on the real wrapper under it, and it's gonna make a mess. <laughs> So, oh, you lit it like all at once. I lit it all at once. Oh, and I wanted to see it. And, what I, would and happen? I was trying to, and I tried to keep the wrapper tight on it too. But it, you know, obviously, it's not. It does. Yeah. Well, that extra wrapper is not really part of the cigar, so yeah, it would just burn. It yeah. just burned, and, and and yeah, it just made uh, heat blotches all over, and just ruined the. It made it, it was unsmokable. So don't try it at home. But I was trying to see if what would that candela, what would it was gonna do. Yeah. I was I was trying to do that. You don't try that at home, kids. Don't don't try it at home. Yeah, I mean, seriously, that that candela wrapper is, it's thin and uh, it can blow around too, so be careful where you. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's. I mean, these wrappers on the leaf are not officially part of the cigar, and they're not meant to be burned as part of the cigar. So, as you've heard us talk on the show, especially when we talk to the master blenders, the leaf placement and in, in which leaves you use, they're also taking into account how fast each one burns. And so combustion is part of the blending process. The leaves that are put in the external part are not meant to be part of any combustion. And 
in fact, when you light, if you take that extra wrapper off and you take a torch to it, like it'll burn pretty quickly. Like it doesn't burn. Yeah. Like, like yeah. You know what I mean? Like a part of a cigar. So. Exactly. That's why I'd be curious to see if you rolled a few of these together, what they would like a perito, like yeah. what they would. It wouldn't I, be a perito because it's not all the same tobacco, but yeah. Anyway. But the cigar, but as for the cigar. The Connecticut Lancero is awesome, by the way. And I think you said this, Will, and I was smoking. I'm like, wow, this is a really good Connecticut. I had to relight it a few times. Uh, I think that might have just been my conditions in my humidor um, as it's been kind of humid. Actually, it was really humid here today in Rhode Island. Um, but I, it, it was a fantastic cigar. This is a box split for me. Like, this is a good morning smoke. It very well may work it into my rotation. Um, not as much as some other cigars, but I, it's a solid offering, and I'm going to try more, and it may creep its way into my, uh, to my rotation. Uh, I generally don't reach for Lanceros as my morning cigar. That's really just a personal kind of preference. Um, I don't know. Usually I'm doing other things in the morning, like working. And I really have to pay attention when I smoke a Lancero. Right. Um, yeah. So I, a lot of my Lancero smoking is done like when I can sit down and have a meeting with someone or a cocktail. And then I'll slow down and I'll smoke a Lancero. But in the morning, I'm usually working. So, uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if it works its way. Or I'm in my car in the morning, right? I mean, I love the Jake Grotto Silk Lanceros. I find myself lighting them up in the car. And the car is not just not a place to have a Lancero. In no, my, I, in my, it's just my maybe just my opinion. I don't know if I'm off base there, but um, yeah, I called this cigar box split. I thought it had great flavors, very sweet, um, and it was probably one of my probably my favorite leaf by Oscar. To be honest with you, I I I would say the two the Lanceros have been very good. I actually the Maduro was my favorite. Um, I haven't smoked I would the Maduro have... yet. Yeah. I think the other one I smoked on the show was the Corojo. Yeah, yeah. I think the Lanceros have been very good. I do the Sumatra. I did like better in the Robusto than, mm -hmm. than the Lancero, but that's okay. Um, but, yeah, the Connecticut I thought was really good in that size. I was really pleasantly surprised with, with that um, one as well. You know, I when you were saying with Lancero, that's a Saturday morning smoke I like to have. I uh, would agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, with, a, with a cup of coffee. Because there's, no, there's, no, there's no science here, but, yeah, I mean – it's in because you, you were talking about the Jay Grotto uh, Silk Lancero, and yeah. that's when I would smoke those a lot. Absolutely. It's, yeah, I was on when vacation. Some, I remember when I had yeah, that. Yeah, that's a vacation yeah. morning cigar when you can really take your time, smoke it slow, and pay attention to the flavors uh, in the Lancero. So. Yeah, I agree. And again, I don't think there's there's not a lot of science around that, but uh, well, you you're out, right? I'm out. So last week on the show was our 200th episode. Yep. And I celebrated by smoking this Opus X BBMF Natural from 2010. Yep. I will say this is the perfect time to smoke this cigar. Like six years of age was perfect. Like I wouldn't put any more age on that and I wouldn't put any less age on that. Like this is on your bar, you know, your line graph. This is the peak. Like on your bell curve, it's peaking at about six years. I've smoked... Maybe one other one in the natural and two other ones in the Maduro, just to give you some facts behind my Opus X BBMF smoking. Um, I smoked a lot of other Opus, and I really think that's like six years. So if you manage to get, here's my advice. <clears throat> if you manage to get one of these super rare BBMFs, don't rush to smoke it. Let it sit for five or six years. That is the magic time to smoke these. Because um, this was just awesome all the way around. It still had a little bit of strength, had some of that leather, but the sweetness really comes through, uh, and it's just amazing smoking experience. It's not quite Oasis, to be honest with you, Will. I think that there are other sizes in the Opus X line that certainly command the Oasis rating. This one for me in the natural wrapper was Fight Chuck Norris, so I mean, it's not, I mean, not like it's bad, right? It just wasn't <clears throat> wasn't quite Oasis. The Maduro is Oasis. Maduro. Now, we smoked that Maduro about a year ago, so I had five years of age on it. And that was probably pretty close to perfect. And I think we were I think we were either Chuck Norris or Oasis, but we were very, very high on that cigar. I, and, and I tell you what, the difference really is the, there's a difference in the sweetness. The natural has a more cinnamon sweetness. The Maduro has more of that dark fruit, dark cherry kind of sweetness which I just tend to like better, which better, which is why it might rate a little higher. 
Um, I would definitely prefer the Maduro to the natural, but I mean, you know, you're talking about if you got to take a cross country trip and someone has a, a, a Lamborghini and, you know, uh, a, a Ferrari and you have to pick between the two, that's really what we're talking about here. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I would um, agree. I, I would say if you have to, if you can't find these and then you happen to stumble across one, if it has a 40 or 50 or $60 price tag, it's worth it to have one. If you're a real connoisseur of cigars, I strongly suggest you try one at that $40, 50 $60 price point. Don't pay more. When it gets above $60, to me, it's a diminishing returns on this cigar. I know that you can buy them at like Casa Fuente and they're like above $100. Don't, don't do that. It's not. Don't do that. Yeah. No. The Maduro, Maduro, I would go a little higher, but I, I wouldn't break that $100 mark for this, for this cigar. Maybe. No, no, I, not the natural. The Maduro. It, it's it's tough. The Maduro was very good. I mean, the Maduro, you know, when you're talking Oasis, then <laughs> then it, yeah, when you, that's when we throw the Oasis rating on where right. you do what you want, you do what you have to do to get this that one. Cigar. Stay between forty and sixty if you can get at that price point. Smoke one, you know, don't go crazy. Smoke one, um, especially if you really like Opus X. Yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm out. I think I'm out. well. I'm out too. Yeah. Excellent. So we're gonna do next up Debonair Ideal, and then we're gonna. Unbanded. Also, also in that segment, we're going to do the Unbanded, which I smoked today, which I'm, I have the envelope here, dude. I'm like really curious. To see what's I got, he gave me one, he gave me one too. Yeah. So no, this is, uh, yeah, you're doing I, a good I, job. Yeah. So, uh. All right. Stay tuned. Don't yep. go anywhere. Yeah. Okay.